Uh, what we're going to do is learn how to use the basics of the FL slicer. And just I'm going to just show you how the way I use it for a lot of my sample beats and songs and stuff. So what I did was I found out, uh, I found a uh, little sample that I shortened up and just right click it on the browser and open a new fruity slicer channel. And you'll see it automatically chops everything up for me. And, uh, you know, it basically does a pretty decent job doing it by itself. And if you click one of the samples, it'll show it right here in the menu. You can reverse it by clicking this. And then play it. Yeah, or just undo that. If you right click it, or each one of the slices, it plays it. You can, uh, choose which method of slicing you want you can do by beat which doesn't really work that well for drum loops if you're trying to get some unique drum sounds or what I like to do on drum loops is medium to auto slicing and that does a pretty decent job of detecting where to slice your drum loops usually gets it right on the kicks and snares and hi-hats and if you have a MIDI keyboard enabled you can uh Play, play along with that. Just messing around. Uh, if you want to personally slice it, you might want to uh, take off this feature called Auto Dump, which dumps the beat to the piano roll right after loading. And every time you change your slice, it'll auto automatically dump it. So I don't typically like using the pre-made loops because it's unoriginal so I'll just cut that off of the piano roll and uh, say if we want to change a slice see how it's real tiny right here we can go in there right click it and then go into your wave view and we'll remove that slice because it's an unnecessary slice do the same with that one and we'll just move that one too just for simplicity so we got our kick, hi-hat, and see it doesn't dump it back in there automatically. And then uh, if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can play your loop into it. Or you can just go into the piano roll and build a beat that way. gets a hi-hat in there there's so many things you can do with the FL slicer it's almost have, like having an NPC if you have a MIDI keyboard hooked up pretty simple man you can just keep getting really really technical with it you know, I just did a basic beat here at 140 BPM, but you can do anything you want. I mean, you can change the BPM on the FL slicer to whatever you want if you just want to use a specific loop or whatever. I mean, you just have to basically mess around. Also, there's this feature called D-click, which basically means it'll uh, fade in and fade out each of the slice so it doesn't have a little pop or click sound at the beginning of the sample. Basically, it... uh brings the volume down to zero decibels at the end and beginning of each sample you probably won't be able to tell unless you experiment with yourself but you can uh, fade in by using the attack slider and you can fade out by using the decay slider I think that's what it stands for um, there's the auto fit feature which fits the beat to the project tempo right after loading I mean, I, I usually don't use that, but uh, I just stick with the simple features of the slicer. And that's about it. I'll hit y'all up with that next tutorial soon. Check out uh, themusictip.com for the producer section. You can find a bunch of uh, old school samples that I personally sampled from albums and records. And then you can experiment with the Fruity Loop slicer yourself. Alright, I'll catch y'all later. Peace. Peace.